Do you know how to get every single dosage calculation problem correct? If not, my friend, listen up for the one formula that will help you get every dose calc problem right every time on your nursing school exam. I've seen nursing instructors teach dose calc in a lot of different ways, and so many of them are really confusing. They require some serious memorization, and honestly, they're just not helpful. You've probably heard many, many times that you need to memorize a bunch of different formulas to pass dose calc, but what you might not know is that by learning it that way, it can actually make you miss points on your exams, and I'll tell you why in a minute. So that's why I created a simple six-step process that will ensure that you get every single dose calc problem right on your exams. Let's dive into step number one. So the first step is to look at the problem and figure out what unit we need to end up with at the end. Is the question asking you for how many milliliters per hour the patient will receive? Is it asking you how many drops per hour will be given? How many units will be given? Uh, what is the question asking you? What's that unit? So step number one is to always read the question and figure out what you need to ultimately end up with at the end. That way you know that you're solving for the right thing. You don't want to get to the end of your exam and realize that you misread the question and got it wrong just because you didn't understand what it was asking. So always make sure to start with the end in mind. What unit do you need to end up with at the end? Now, you'll write this unit on the right side of your paper under need. Now, step number two is to look at the problem again and see what the original order says. What was the doctor's order? Did the doctor order a certain number? Number of milligrams, grams, or milliliters, or something else. So reread the question again and look at what the order says and write that on the left side of your paper under order. Now we move on to step number three. Now we need to get from what is ordered on the left side to what we need on the right side. So how are we going to do that? This is where your conversion factors come into play. That's step number three. What conversions do you need to use to solve the problem? If you're sitting here saying, Wait, but how do we possibly do that without memorizing formulas? Stay with me. Let's talk through it. I totally get it, friend. I'm a pro at freaking out when it comes to math. I'm really not a math person <laughs> by any stretch of the imagination. And that's why I love this six-step process so much. It works every time. It's so much easier for you to visualize. Now, the trick to dimensional analysis is that units need to cross themselves off. We need to eliminate them. And we do this by using conversion factors to cancel out those units. The unit that we want to end up with at the end that must be aligned with the railroad track of the dimensional analysis. All other units need to cancel themselves out. This is where that six step process really stands out and sets itself apart from all other formula methods. So even though a formula might be working okay for you now, as you progress in your program and need to solve more complex dose calc problems, you will run into major issues using formulas. I do not want you to get to your exam, have a bunch of random formulas memorized and then realize that they either don't work for with what the question is asking or you just don't know which formula to use because there's so many of them that you have in your brain, right? I see it all the time. Do not do that to yourself. You will miss points. So instead, I have a trick for you to help you know what conversion factors to use. But first, if you are a Nursing SOS member, make sure that you check out the full dose count course inside the Nursing SOS membership community. So, so great. We lay it all out for you with step-by-step -step videos, tons of practice problems as well. Uh, so if you're not confident with answering dose count questions yet, it will help you out so, so much. So be sure to check that out. All right, now here is that little trick I use when solving dose count questions, is to look at the original problem and see if they give you any conversion factors first. Go back through, reread the question. If they give you any conversions, write them in the middle of your paper. Now from here, keep checking in on what you have ordered and what you need to end up with and see if you can crisscross your way through any, um, any of the units to get you to the right unit you need to end up with. Another hint for this is to remember your basic conversions, milliliters to liter, uh, milligrams to grams, and so on. So those will help you really work through the problem trying to get from what is ordered to what you need and move on along the problem. Now, here are two things that I want you to remember as you are going through any dose calc problem, okay? When you write a unit on both the top and the bottom of those dimensional analysis of the railroad tracks, they need to cancel each other out. And number two, whatever unit you want to end up at the end needs to be on the top 
of the railroad track. And whatever unit you need to end up with at the bottom needs to be on the bottom of the railroad track. Now, don't be afraid to play around with the conversion factors if you need to. There have been many a time where I needed to put in a conversion and see if it works and then erase it if it doesn't. So sometimes you just need to do that good old fashioned trial and error process if you're not sure what conversions to use where. So don't be afraid to try different ones and see what works. Now, if you are struggling with knowing your conversion factors, be sure to download this free cheat sheet that I have for you that walks you through the must know conversion factors that you have to know to pass your dose of calc exams. So that cheat sheet is going to walk you through the ones that you have to know. Uh, so be sure to snag that after you watch this video. The link is down below in the description for you to snag it. So now that you have all your conversion factors in place and they look good and we ended up with the right units on the top and the bottom of the railroad tracks, now we need to move on to step number four. We multiply it. So in step number four is to multiply straight across the top of the railroad tracks, multiply straight across the bottom of the railroad tracks, and then divide those two numbers. Then moving on to step number five, which is to use the correct rounding rules and the rules for zero. There's three main rules that you're going to want to follow. Now, these are super, super important to know, okay? Rule number one, you should never include trailing zeros, only leading zeros. So let's say your answer is 0.5. You wouldn't just write it like 0.5 like that or 0.5. Five zero. Uh, the decimal point will get lost and someone might think it's five or 50. So instead you want to write it as 0 0.5. So everyone knows where that decimal is. Now rule, rule number two, when you round, make sure you round at the very end in step number five. Do not round when you are plugging in your conversion factors or when you're multiplying, you will get the wrong answer. So follow the steps. Don't round until step number five. Okay. Now rule number three, You've probably heard it before. If you need to round the number five or greater, round up. If it's four or lower, round down. Now, perhaps the most important step is step number six, which is to double check your math. So rework the problem again to make sure you got it correct. Dosage calculations are really important to get it right, right? It can literally mean life or death for a patient. So it's always important to double check yourself to make sure that you got the correct answer. Now, like I said earlier, you've probably been told that memorizing a ton of formulas is the only way to pass dose calc in nursing school. Well, my friend, that is just simply not true. And in fact, if you do, you will miss points on your exam. So do not listen to the nursing school rumors, my friend, or it will cost you big time, okay? So be sure to watch this video here so you can recognize those rumors when you hear them and know what to do instead so you can pass. And my friend, go become the nurse that God created only you to be. And I will see you over there in the next video. Take care. Bye.